Good morning, class. Good morning. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed. My faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. That's what God made us to be, to not be victims, to not be overwhelmed and overcome and defeated, but to be triumphant ones, victorious ones. Everybody said out loud, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm, more than a conqueror. I'm, victorious, I'm victorious in Christ. In Christ. Hallelujah. Whether you, you look that way or whether you feel that way or not is not the determining factor. It's what the Lord said about it. And if you agree with him, and he said that we are, so let's agree with him. Get your Bible, get something to make some notes with. Come on into the classroom. We've saved you a seat right up front and close uh, put everything else on, on pause, on hold. Give this your full attention. And um, we are confident that you, that we can get answers today. We can hear from him. And a one word from him totally changed the situation. When God spoke and said, light be, <laughs> did that change the situation? Not a lot of words, but oh, what a change. Father, we acknowledge how great you are. You are the great almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything that is in all of them. And our creator and our God and our sustainer and our healer, provider, protector, you are everything to us and we thank you for it. Uh, we seek you, Lord, for this day our daily bread, asking you for that which ministers to us and answers our questions and helps us. And we purpose not to be hearers only, but to be doers. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you go, please, class, to our great textbook, the Bible, uh, to the book of Matthew and the ninth chapter for some weeks now. We have been on a series that we're calling uh, Faith for Healing. Faith School, as you might imagine, uh, we deal with faith. And uh, if you haven't been with us, uh, we've already covered a lot of ground. If, if you go online and, and go to the Faith School, uh, you can go back to the previous broadcast. For instance, we camped out in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews for weeks and weeks and weeks. I think over 150 lessons just on that. And so if you haven't heard that, it would benefit you to go and because we talk about the very basic basics, why faith, what faith is, how faith comes, how it's released. And so everybody needs that and all of us need to hear it again from time to time. So uh, that's available to you. No charge, won't cost you anything. It's, a, it's available free. But what we've done now is having laid that foundation, we're going on to areas of faith. And now we're talking about faith for healing. When we talk about faith, we're talking about faith in God. Faith in God. And faith in God comes from hearing what God said. If I'm going to trust that God has done, is doing, will do something, it has to be based on what He said He has done, is doing, will do. So uh, what did He say about healing? That's where I'm going to get my faith for healing. If I need faith for provision, I need to hear what He said about that. If I need faith for protection, I need to hear what God said about protection. And so what we're on right now is faith for healing. Wonderfully, uh, there's a lot in the Bible about healing. And Jesus' earthly ministry uh, was comprised, a whole bunch of it was healing. 
ministering to people that were sick, that were bound, that were broken, uh, and, and not uh, you know, telling them that they were supposed to be broken or sick or weak. Uh, there, there's too much talk about brokenness now. And people act like, you know, it's, it's part of God's mysterious plan. Uh, and people say, well, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not a perfect person and I'm a broken person, but, but God loves me anyway. Um, you're not supposed to be a broken person. God can make you whole. God can heal you. Uh, obviously, We've all had a lot of issues and failures and, and, and things, but to just embrace brokenness and identify as being a flawed, broken individual is out of line with the New Testament. Uh, we're supposed to find out who we are in Christ and confess who we are in Him. And in Christ, I'm not broken, I'm made righteous. Come on, is it true or not? In Christ, I've been made uh, his wisdom, his righteousness, his sanctification, his redemption. And even though I may uh, look and feel some things in the natural, I'm not to dwell on that and identify with that. I'm to identify with who I am, what I am, what I have in Christ. And you'll see again and again, like in this case right here, at the end of this account of the healing we're talking about now, the Lord looked at the woman and said, your faith has made you whole. Wholeness is God's will, not brokenness. If you are broken, come get healed. Is that right? Come. Uh, God did not intend for you to live an impaired, broken life. Uh, is God powerful? Can He take care of you? Can He heal you? Can He restore you? Can He make you whole? Somebody say amen. amen. So uh, let's look at how this woman went from being infirm, sick, broken, to being made whole. In Matthew 9 and the 20th verse, it says, Behold, a woman was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, If I may touch, uh, but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Now here you see a, a big difference in the way faith talks and in the way most church-going people talk. You've got to realize she did not see Jesus uh, necessarily as the Messiah. Uh, and, and I doubt seriously that she saw him as the Son of God. Most people, as he was walking the earth, did not see him that way. Some did. You know, Peter at one point, uh, Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? You remember that? And they said, well, some say you're this, some say you're that, which shows what I'm talking about. They were not saying he was the Messiah. They're saying he's a prophet. He's anointed. And he was, he was that. And then Peter said, uh, you're the son of God. <laughs> and he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. That was a revelation from heaven. But um, uh, uh, she saw him as being used of God, as a, a minister, a uh, minister. Uh, a prophet, anointed of God. And uh, we'll, we'll see in just a moment that the thing that spurred her to this point was she heard about what had been happening in Jesus' meetings. And notice what she said, uh, if I can just touch uh, the, the hem of his garment, what'd she say? I shall be whole. Well, is that the way most people talk? You know, when I pray, when hands are laid on me, when I do this or that, it will come to pass. Uh, that's how faith talks. It is fully persuaded. There's no vacillation. It, 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 that's why it, it, if you're still saying, well, Lord, is it your will to heal me? Then you're not in faith. You, you're not ready to pray the prayer of faith. 
because you're still questioning the will of God. If she had said, well, I'm going to touch and we'll see what happens. I sure hope so. I, I sure want it to be. We'll give it a try. We'll do our best. None of that is faith. And so we, we must be enlightened and let our mind be renewed to the reality of what faith is. And, and if you say, well, I, I can't speak that, that confidently and definitely that this or that's going to happen. Okay, that's a starting place. You realize I'm not there. I'm not there in faith. How do I get there? Well, faith in God and, and what he has done and what he is doing and will do, what does it come from? It's from hearing what he said. And so how are you going to move from your indecisiveness, from your unsureness into this place of it will happen, it shall happen? Um, you've got to hear something other than doubt and unbelief. Most of what you hear around you in this world is not going to put faith in God into you. It'll try to take faith out of you. Hearing the wrong thing can take your faith away and put fear in you. Hearing the right thing will put, an, put faith in you until it pushes and expels and displaces fear out of you. It's wonderful what the Word of God can do for you. You can be just so unstable and I just don't know and I can't tell and I'm sorry, I just don't have that kind of faith. And, and yet you can get in under the right influences and hear the right things day in, day out until you get to the place where I know, sure I know, I know now. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm settled now, and you can get into faith no matter how much fear and unbelief you have been in. But you can't just keep listening to the problem, and you can't just keep listening to everybody tell you. Don't be watching that faith school. Don't, don't, don't listen to those guys. They're messed up. Well, how are they doing? How many miracles are they having? Huh? How many healings are they seeing? I had somebody want to take us to task one time, and they said, you know, we don't preach all that healing stuff. Uh, they said, we just preach the gospel. And I almost laughed. Because the healing is part of the gospel. Hallelujah. If you preach the same gospel that Jesus preached and that Paul preached, you preached healing. Healing for everybody. But anyway, uh, I asked them, I said, well, uh, in their group, I said, so... Uh, are you having a lot of healings? They said, well, no, we don't, we don't believe in all that. I said, well, that's interesting, isn't it? You don't preach it and you don't have it. And we preach it and I've got notebooks full of testimonies. I pointed to a shelf. I said, notebooks full of testimonies. Reckon there's a connection. <laughs> huh? You don't preach it. You don't have it. Why? Because faith comes by here. How can they hear it if it's never preached? We preach it, we have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, ignore what they say about us and come on in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they already think you're one of us anyway. You might as well get the benefits. <laughs> come on in. We're a good bunch. There's nothing wrong with us. We're a good bunch. Come on in. And uh, let this word build faith in you until it absolutely pushes fear and doubt out. So uh, she said, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. Fully persuaded faith declares with all confidence the outcome. Hmm? With, with all confidence. We, we have a, a, you know, somewhat large ministry that a lot of moving parts going on right now today, and it takes a lot of funds and a lot of resources to, to, to make that happen. And I can say absolutely confidently, all our needs are and will be met according to God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, Brother Keith, are you sure? I'm absolutely confident. Huh? What's going to happen with all the bills for the churches and the ministry? They will be paid. 
on time, ahead of time, with surplus. Well, what if, what if, no, no, what do you mean? Well, what if it's not God's will? I know it is God's will. It's his ministry. Come on, are y'all with me? I'm just giving you an example. I can speak definitely about that because I'm not questioning God's will. I got settled on it. I got settled on it that we're supposed to be doing these things, that he told us to do these things, that he told us he would take care of us and supply all our needs. How does faith come? I heard what he said. Come on, can you see this? I heard what he said, and I know he's not a liar, and I know he can do what he said he would do, and I have full confidence that he has, that he can, that he will do exactly what he said he would do, and I've seen it happen day after day, month after month, year after year for decades now, so uh, anybody came too late to tell me it doesn't work. I know it does, but can you see, I have to do my part, and we have to do our part around here too. We have to believe what he said, and we have to affirm it, and act on it, and not question it, and not doubt it. Well, when you... uh, When you do the same thing with healing like she did, you will see the same kind of outcome. What did she say? Not I want to be, not I need to be, not it could be, not God can do anything and everything. No, that won't cut it. That's not faith on the individual's part. What did she say? I, when I touch, I shall be whole. I shall be. I will be. Do you hear how definite that is, class? How definite that is. If you're not talking that definite, then you're not yet fully persuaded. And you're not yet in faith. So she said, I shall be. If I can touch but his garment, I shall be whole. When Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Now the language is not repetitive for no reason. We see three times in a row it talks about her being made whole. Can you see that? She said uh, when she touched, she'd, she'd be made whole. Jesus told her her faith made her whole. And the final outcome was that she was made whole. Can you see exactly what she said came to pass? And see, that's in agreement with what Jesus told her because he didn't say, my anointing made you whole. My power made you whole. I chose to minister healing to you. It happened to be God's will and plan today. No, none of that. And that's what Uh, So many are emphasizing, you know, most of the church world does not emphasize what Jesus said. They emphasize something else. They emphasize the will of God. Hmm? Or they emphasize the power of God. Well, couldn't the Lord have said that? Couldn't he have looked at her and said, daughter, be of good comfort? In this case, it happened to be the will of God for you to be healed. Couldn't he have said that? Couldn't he have looked at her and said, daughter, be of good comfort. It was God's power that made you whole. It was the power of God on me. Couldn't he have said that? Couldn't he have emphasized that? If that's what is the, the determining factor, if that's what should have been emphasized. So in many, many cases, the church is emphasizing something different from what Jesus emphasized. And it's why we need to take the time. Go over these accounts, uh, if you will, with the fine-tooth comb. Look at every part because um, the enemy is so subtle. He's so deceptive and tricky and crafty. And the enemy's, his main uh, method of operating is his favorite deception, I might say, is religious Religious. That's how he functions. He, he knows if he comes to a child of God that's really saved, that loves God, and he comes to them as the devil <laughs> and goes, hey, I'm the devil. I got evil stuff I want to give you and do for you. What's any child of God going to say? No, 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 no. He knows that. 
He's not going to do that. He never comes that way. Never. The Bible said he transforms himself into an angel or a messenger of light. And his ministers change their selves up and present themselves and they, they're, they're as actors, pretenders, as ministers of righteousness. The, the enemy is the best actor you have ever uh, had any contact with. And you talk about playing a role. He plays an angel like nobody's business. He plays a minister of righteousness. You need the Holy Spirit to help you to not be tricked. So why are we saying that? Because he has slipped in subtly to most of the church to undermine people's faith and say, well, the determining factor is the will of God. You should be humble and respectful and submit to the will of God. Now that sounds right, doesn't it? It sounds good, but the Lord never said that. In any case of healing or deliverance, not one time. So in order for something to be scriptural, what do you need for it? Scriptures, right? So if you're going to emphasize that the main determining factor in people being healed and delivered is the will of God, where's your scripture? Not even one but we do have verse after verse, account after account after account after account after account after account, and I hadn't got through doing them yet, where Jesus said, your faith made the difference. Your faith made you whole. Your faith has saved you. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. Should we emphasize what Jesus emphasized? Yes. Should we? Yes. Instead of something else. Yes, we respect God and His will and His plan. Yes, we want to submit to His will and His way. And if it really was God's will for you to be sick, don't be a hypocrite and don't go to the doctor. Come on now. If you really believe it's God's will for you to be sick, don't you dare try to get rid of it. Because now you're fighting the will of God. You're resisting the will of God. No, see, there's a lot of problems with this, aren't there? Uh-uh. See, people will sit up in church and say they believe, yeah, that God might have put this cancer on you to teach you something, but then Monday morning, they're over trying to get rid of it. Right? As they should be. They should be. Well, both of those can't be right. And people do the same thing. Well, you know, God doesn't want you to have all that, you know, any prosperity or any abundance. But then they're working themselves silly, trying to make some money and trying to get a better house. And kind of, well, that's being a hypocrite. <laughs> Come on, can you see that or not? That's being a hypocrite. You don't tell people, well, you shouldn't have much. And then you're going out trying to have lots. <laughs> Both of them can't be right. What is right? What I'm saying further, it's a dangerous deception, this religious stuff. It's actually, see, the enemy portrays it as though it's Bible, as though it's from God, when it's actually from the pit. It's from the devil himself. Doctrines of devils, it's called, or doctrines of demons would be a more accurate description. Doctrines of demons. And they're preached, not just in Satanist churches, in Christian churches, from the pulpit. And, and it's why, child of God, you need a Bible. And you need to read the Word on a regular basis. And you need to, every time, whether it's me preaching it, or your pastor, or whoever it is, you need to be thinking all the time, okay, now where is that in the Word? Where is that? Where is that? And if somebody just keeps talking about something and there's no scripture for it and they're building this whole doctrine on something and you think, well, hold on. Now, where is that? Where is that? And you talk about a, uh, a wrong doctrine destroyer is just reading a couple of verses before that verse and a couple of verses after that verse and getting a fuller context. The scripture said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established 
uh, the more ignorant you are of the Word or we are of the Word, the more easily tricked and deceived and misled and robbed we will be. But the more full of His Word and full of the knowledge of His will from His Word, it makes us harder to be tricked, harder to be deceived. Uh, Do you see what Jesus did when He was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights? Was the enemy trying to trick Him? Huh? Could you see it? Was He trying to trick Him? So that shows you what He's going to try to do with you, what He's already been trying to do with you and me. He, He he would say, well, if you're the Son of God, you know, do this. And then he would quote Scripture, well, the Scripture says this, so why don't you do this? How did Jesus combat that? How did he deal with that? How did he know whether what the enemy was saying to him was right or wrong? He said, it is written. Oh, hallelujah. When you know what is written, and then when the enemy tried to misquote and misapply Scripture, he said, it is also written, when you know that, then you're not tricked. You're not deceived. You're not misled. So do not uh, ignore the Bible. Do not say, well, the Bible is, you know, so complicated. Who can understand it? You can understand it. The author of the book will help you every day to show you what you need to see of it right now in this situation. Somebody said out loud, the Spirit of God God is my teacher, is my my helper. helper. And the Word of God God is God speaking to me. me. I can understand Him. I can see see and hear and and know know His will will and His ways. ways. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise God. Praise God. Do you believe it? Yes. It's true. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. And just because something is religious does not make it right and certainly doesn't make it God. Examine everything. Scrutinize everything by two big issues, the Word of God and the Spirit of God who's inside you, and He'll keep you safe. Can you say amen? Amen. And our time's up. Uh, today, said out loud, I live by faith, I walk by faith, I overcome the world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's it for today, but as you can see, we've got a lot more to go on this. We just got it introduced today. Come back with us tomorrow, and we'll see you again soon, right here in Faith School. I've got a Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.